All right, we're finally at the top. After spending six days straight motorbiking northern Vietnam, you would think Alejandro and I would want to have a little R&R &R at our last stop in Sapa. But you know what? That's not really our style, and it's our very last stop in Vietnam. So we decided to go out with a bang and do our trek for three days, hiking and staying with a small indigenous group in the mountains of Sapa. Could there be a better walkabout in Vietnam? I would argue no. Let's find out why this hike is so special. Okay, here's a quick update for you guys. We got into Sapa last night for Hamzhang by bus. We got in around 11 p.m. and immediately had to start our trek the next morning, today, around 9 a.m. So yeah, we're a little bit worn out, but not too bad. We started our trek from Sapa City and we climbed to this beautiful hilltop. It only took about 35 minutes to get above the clouds, 35 to 40 minutes. It is hot and there's not that much shade, but the views are gorgeous. We have a local guide that's going to take us through the villages and the indigenous group that she's a part of. And that's where we're going to be spending the night for the next two nights out here in the mountains. But yeah, to the left behind me here is Sapa. And on this side is a bunch of clouds, farmland, and villagers. So it should be a good trip. We got two other people with us, one from the UK and the other one from Germany and tomorrow we have a French woman joining us as well so it's a pretty small group and um, so far our guide she seems really nice very relaxed very calm not rushing things so it should be a good excursion I'm not sure other than that what I told you that's all I know for the details for now Time for lunch. Ooh. White rice, some chicken, some spring rolls. Yeah. What is it? Like a salad? Cabbage. Cabbage. Sauteed. Oh, that's good. It's good spring roll? Mm -hmm. Alright, lunch is over. Time to start hiking again. Ready to go hike? I'm ready to take a nap. Me too. That's what I'm ready for. Yeah. It's a really strong one. <laughs> All right, we're walking to their village now. We got about an hour and a half left before we reach home for the day. A lot of agriculture, a lot of farming. There's seven different languages and tribes that live all in this area. And the interesting thing is, is that they don't understand each other. We're headed down right now to check out the bamboo farmers. And right here, you see a whole bamboo forest where they harvest the crop and sell it. It's just uh, a way of life for them. Come in here, come. Very good. <laughs> you like them? She picked a bunch of berries. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm. The wild orange berries and the delicious. They're so good. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Oh. Are you a bear? <laughs> this is the sort of place where your car gets you. We made it to our guide's home. This is our home right here. Let's check it out. We made it! This vlog later has officially reached us here at our homestay. We were hanging out here for a couple hours just chit-chatting and drinking tea from herbs that she literally pulled from the ground on the way in. It was really good. 
nice and tasty. This is her home, and we're staying on the bottom floor. But there's also rooms upstairs, and this is the kitchen here, and we're about to start prepping some food to make for dinner. So I better go back in there before I get yelled at. Oh, you're cooking our dinner? Yeah. Ah, cook it. That's gonna be a spring roll. Yum, yum, yum. You're making the spring rolls? Spring rolls. for dinner. Spring rolls right there. Peeled some garlic here. Some cooked tofu right there. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Day one felt like a pretty long day, but it felt really balanced. There was no rush at viewpoints or lunch, and the pace was set to get a sense of connection in the community of the mountains of Sapa. After our amazing dinner, we hung out with our host, Sung, and her husband, talking, drinking, and connecting with each other rather than our phones. It was pretty nice. This was our room for last night and also tonight. So, very simple room, brick design and just one bed. It's pretty comfortable, but it's not any insulation, so you do hear everything if people are moving outside of here. But it's also very private, so I like that. And um, something weird that we noticed is that we hung our clothes outside of our bed, and since there's not that much insulation, when the clouds come in and all that moisture comes in, all our clothes were kind of a little bit damp and it was weird to kind of like put them on. I didn't, it was like uncomfortable, right? Oh yeah, it was very uncomfortable. So that was something that we learned and we're going to change it. in the backpack too. Yeah, we're going to change it tonight. We're going to leave our stuff inside the bed with us and maybe that'll help us an extra barrier from the moisture because all our stuff was like slightly wet, which we didn't really think that much of the clouds were going to come inside the building. Yeah, today's day two. We just had a, a nice breakfast. We had an awesome dinner last night as well. And we're gonna go do some trekking, but this will be a little different because yesterday was started in Sapa City and then we worked our way up the mountain and then down to the village here. And today it's gonna be further out, but we're coming, we're going there and we're coming back here to spend one more night. Yeah, with that said, we're gonna put our shoes on and go do some walking. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> vibes and it's just so green and lush and with the bamboo fencing you really feel like you are in a small farm village so I like it but views in the distance not happening
Day two, I really just soaked in all the scenery of the village I was in. It was like I was in nature, but not. It was more about observing the community and their everyday life rather than epic viewpoints and mountain summit. We spent the entire day walking about the neighborhoods at a slow pace, learning about plant dyes and hemp clothing, along with many other things. Once we got back to Sung's house, we had another nice dinner where we repeated the same rituals as day one, but with a couple more guests from around the world. Today is day three, the day we go back to Sapa. It's actually a lot further than I thought, three hours by walking. But before we do all that, we had to do a quick dress up and photo shoot in the traditional clothes of Sung's tribe. All right, well today we head out back to the city of Sapa. We had two nights in this beautiful home behind us here. It's really, really, really high up in the hills. So like every day is kind of fogged out like this. We got really lucky on day one, but essentially it's just like a walkabout through the farmlands, through the villages to see how the local people live and then hang out with our guests and her family in her house, which is really cool. And they cook like traditional dishes and stuff like that. Um, all in all, it's like pretty relaxing. There are some big climbs to get back to this place on day two. Overall, it was just like walking through farms and looking at different plants and different types of livestock and agriculture and bamboo and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I think overall it was a nice way to get out of the city for a couple days. Kind of interesting to do it after the Hajang Loop because we see all this as we're driving around and stopping through villages, but we're not actually like walking through all of them that much. So it was cool to kind of see it more in a slower pace. But um, yeah, now it's time to head back to Sapa City, which is gonna take about, I think she said three hours. So, okay. and it's at a slow pace. So, I mean, if you're moving quickly, I'm sure it's shorter, but for us, it's gonna take about three, three and a half. So let's go. Spending three days in the villages outside of Sapa I think was really the right call for us. We never toured the city itself, but we don't have any regrets. Hanging out with Sung, her family, interacting with all the indigenous locals for the last three days felt special. It's a step back into simpler times, where agriculture and community run the show. You see the most resourceful kids, all with great big smiles. And you get a laugh at Sung's stories, how she's nervous about riding a motorbike and going into the city. That's so un-Vietnamese. But then again, she's part of a small ethnic minority that does things a little different. And that's why this tour was so special.